Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. Just a couple of days ago, I posted a video basically talking about how to explore the many different kinds of photographic papers for inkjet printing, that is, that exists out there. And it can be really daunting and very, very confusing. So I suggested that you guys would look at the various manufacturers' websites in fact, the easiest way is to go to Amazon.com and type in photo paper sample packs and you will achieve great many hits on all sorts of different types of paper sample packs from the major paper manufacturers. And we got to talking with a good friend of mine from Australia. His name on the channel is The Art of Women Photography and he owns a Canon Pro 1 and a Canon Pro 1000 and he's been a virtual encyclopedia of knowledge when it comes to those two printers because he actually uses them professionally and so I always go to him when I have a particular question about exactly how a Pro 1000 behaves with this and that because he has one and he uses it all the time well he suggested that i look at ilford fine art papers and i said well i thought ilford went out of business well guess what it has not and he sent me very generously sent me a sample pack of ilford papers and i am going to have one heck of a fun time printing these on the pro one and also the 3880 so he also sent me the link to the downloadable ICC profiles for basically any printer that you may have on hand. And so I'm going to proceed with that. Well, Precision Colors, not far behind, sent me a new upgraded gloss optimizer for the P400 from Epson. As you may know, just like the original R800, 1800, then later on the 1900 series, the 2000 series, and now with the newest iteration of these printers that utilize Gloss Optimizer. If you go back, I have tested a new inkset from Precision Colors using an upgraded Gloss Optimizer. Well, this is now PC High Gloss Gloss Optimizer dot two. So this is going to be tested. I am right at this minute creating a profile for the test ink set that I used a while back. And this is utilizing this. Let me see if I could find that here. This version of Gloss Optimizer. Okay. So this is the one currently on there. This is supposed to be already pretty good. So now I'm going to go ahead and compare it with this. All I'm going to do is change the gloss optimizer from that one to this one. We'll print some parallel prints and then put them side by side to see which gloss optimizer produces a more even result. Remember, nothing has come close to the original Epson gloss optimizer in quality and evenness of results as far as gloss goes. Same thing goes for Chroma Optimizer. The OEM is king. So anyway, so that's what I'm doing. I'm making a profile right now for some luster paper. I'm going to go ahead and print some preliminary prints. And then we'll switch over the Gloss Optimizer to this one and make comparison prints. All of them will be basically parallel, identical prints. So we can do a side-by-side -side test. All right, let's go back to the that super curly San Gabriel paper that I bought from Red River, basically because these were the last few rolls that they had. They had been erroneously wrapped or rolled at the factory and making them nearly impossible to use even if you fed the uh, paper backwards basically so that it would be glossy side up it's just too much tension the paper is so thick and so curled that it's just i i don't think it would work out very well so what i did was i cut sheets 
and I tried them on the P800 using Precision Colors inks. I reduced the time between passes, but nevertheless, once you start printing on a width of 17 inches using this paper, you get a lot of buckling, and I believe it may have been a case of uh, ink density possibly, or I really don't know. I tried many settings on the P800 to try to reduce the problem to no avail. I was getting scraping, and you saw that in my last video. Now, to solve that, smaller prints, they work fine. So I cut the roll, and I still have another one hitting, sitting here on the floor. So I cut the roll to 17 by 24 sheets, and they are relaxing over there. They still have a bit of a curl to them. And also I have some 12 by 17s sitting over here with lots of uh, heavy paper weights on top of it to try to flatten them out. I have them sandwiched face to face and we'll see what that does. Now, I wanted to show you something really unusual before I show you these prints. Let me go ahead and grab a small bit of that paper here. So here I have a bit of that paper from that roll. Now, if I was to curl it in this direction, there seems to be a lot more tension. And here it just curls so easily. And you will see that papers have directional grain. And just like if you were to take a piece of wood veneer, you could bend it easily along the grain, but it would be very stiff against the grain. Well, the same thing for paper. And before I show you the uh, prints, this is so much easier to bend this way but very, very stiff to bend this way. And it's not because this is a longer dimension. That's just the way it is. So this is the way that the paper was emerging out of the printer. So I had to print them horizontally, basically, not this way. Because what happens, as you can see, these, these edges are rising up. And no matter what I do to try to alleviate that curl, it just was not sitting flat during the printing process and the edges were catching the print head. So I went ahead and said, well, let's go ahead and test this on the 3880 with OEM inks. And I got tired of the P800 scratching the hell out of the prints that I was creating or attempting to create, and I wasted a lot of paper doing that. So I sort of, okay, let's stop this for a minute. And I went over to the 3880, made a profile, and proceeded to make some prints and what I found out was that as the paper emerges out of the printer, you have a gap of about maybe three quarters of an inch from the lower portion of the paper and the actual support of the tray. These printers are not designed to give you a flat feed path. There's actually almost an inch drop. And so as paper comes out, it is not supported. And what I did was I took a box of paper and I put it underneath the, on top of the paper exit table. And that seemed to alleviate the problem. I also had to increase the plate and gap to wide. And I actually set the thickness to 10. And finally, finally I got something that's pleasing and no scratches. But it took me a while. So as you can see, this is, this bends easily this way but not this way, regardless. Even if this was this long, it would not bend as easily. So the grain of this particular paper stock is running in this direction, which is really strange. It should not be. The flexibility of the paper should be along the length of the paper and not at 90 degrees to it. So at any rate, once I was able to find a setting that worked, I was able to then produce a nice image. And this is not my image. Again, I downloaded this from a free download site. And I'm pleased with it. I love the surface texture. I love the look. This actually looks better on the Pro 100 than on the 3880, believe me. This paper is a perfect match to the Pro 100, even with Precision Colors inks, and I suppose with OEM inks, it would be fabulous as well. So I decided to let's go ahead and take a chance 
and do a 17 by 24. So the first one failed and it failed because of that very same problem I just described. I needed to stick a basically a box of 50 sheets 13 by 19 right underneath it and as the paper came out it had support. It actually lied on top of the box and I also reduced the drying time between passes to only about 0.15 of a second and so that seemed to do the trick and I got very nice even results and again this is very nice and beautifully printed. Let me bring this up to the camera so again as you can see I was able to do this I apologize for the cut the phone started ringing and it's always a telemarketer so anyway so here we go this seemed to work on the 3880 I did not get that oversaturation of ink I think it's an ink density problem with the P800 causing all the buckling that would then cause the head to strike in areas where it should be nice and flat but the paper buckles up and of course the print head strikes against it and literally scrapes the coating right off of this paper. So Burrito papers are very fragile and you need to treat them very gingerly when you print in any kind of unevenness of curl or buckling will indeed cause head strikes. So at this point, I'm happy with these results. I will then basically dedicate the 3880 to print on this paper that I have still 50 feet of it. And so that will be a nice situation to have, especially with paper that I purchased so cheaply. Now, I was provided by someone, very helpful person, a viewer, with a link to a review side by side of the old Red River San Gabriel 1.0 and the new 2.0. And side by side, you see the huge differences. And yeah. It's not the same paper, folks. It's entirely different. Now, some of you who may have already tried it, if you have never seen this one, you will love it. But if you've seen this paper, there's no comparison. So um, we'll see. I still have to order some, and I'm kind of debating whether to do so. But I think ultimately I will order some and just test it and see what what the uh, all the hubbub is about. And so that way I'll be able to make a, a um, intelligent comparison. You have to have it side by side. All right, that is it for now. As I showed you earlier, I have those um, Ilford papers. Those are fabulous papers. And I'll go ahead and begin testing those and show you some of the results in future videos. So thank you once again. We are almost hitting 5,500 subscribers. I just saw today and I was shock when i saw about 15 subscribers all of a sudden show up so thank you once again for all the support you've given me in this channel and i hope i have been able to help a lot of people out there which is really my only and true goal for this so thank you once again please subscribe share and like and until the next time happy printing everybody bye bye